trip? No, I'm still here. Okay, okay, no, I'm coming. I'll be right there. I'm still here. Okay, okay, no, I'm coming. I'll be right there. Okay. Julie Wilson. Antonioni. Now, of course, I always call you first, Jules. You know that. Not only because I love you as a woman, but also because I care very deeply about your bank's profits. And I want you to have shares in this beautiful company. OK, OK, well, let's put it another way. How expensive a lunch is it going to take for you to reconsider this astounding opportunity? Jeff Mills. Can you call me back? OK. See, that wasn't how hard, was it? All right, well, I'll call you on Monday to confirm. All right, darling, thanks. Bye. What just happened? I just called Abby about tomorrow and she's like, I need some space. I think we should cool off. Not good. Hello. You've got to remember, man, that love is just a chemical that goes off in your brain when you meet someone. You know, pow. When you meet someone you like. You've got to remember that it's just a chemical. And you can't let chemicals fuck with your life. I mean, what do chemicals know? Like? Raph, Harcourt needs you. <laughs> You're welcome. Mike. Oh, what? What the fuck are you doing? Leave it. Michael. Oh, no, no, no. Bastard. Sort this out, don't worry. 
Not now, Prophet. We're infeasibly long on righteous indignation. Raf was fifth top broker last year. There's no way he should be out. Look, Mike, I don't like making people redundant. Well, you don't like making white people redundant. What's that supposed to mean? Well, that means, Jerome, is you want to cut costs. There's loads of names I could have given you before, Raf. Well, I'm head of sales, so fuck you. Do you want to come outside and say that? Children, children. I mean, don't get me wrong, boss. Your nephew's a great kid, and I love him. I love him very deeply. But he's only been here three months, and he doesn't know what he's doing. We can't prevent the bluebird of misery from flying over our heads, but we can make sure it doesn't shit in our hair. Chinese proverb. I want first dibs on Raf's book. No way. One, I can't. Three. Two, on condition you vacate the premises immediately and return in the sunnier disposition on Monday. Done. Now shake hands, make up. Have a pleasant weekend, gentlemen. Mike. Trader. I'm here with Rashner. Come on over. Jerome drinks there, man. What are you doing? So what? I can't drink here now just because he does. Bollocks. Listen, mate. I'm going to put some calls in for you. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I know. You guys half for my account, sir. Mike, you're a fucking animal. Outside. What? It's broken. Not by me. Um, do you have a cell phone? Yes, thanks. No, I mean, I need to make a quick call. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. It's a long story, but I'm gonna be late. How late? Just go ahead and eat with Catherine, okay? I'll be there. I don't want to get stuck with Catherine. Where are you? Just wait for me, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. It's really great of you. I, I appreciate it. Can I have a cigarette? Sure. There's a machine right there. Yeah, um, I, I can see that, but I only want one. If I buy a whole pack, I'll wake up tomorrow with a hangover and a bunch of cigarettes, and I'll start smoking again, and I don't want to do that. You could buy a whole pack, just smoke one, and give the rest to me. That didn't occur to me. Well, think about it. That way, you'd get your cigarette, but you'd feel guilty for wasting your money, so you'd be less likely to start smoking, and I'd get 15 free cigarettes. My bag was just stolen, OK? I lost my credit cards, my cell phone, and all my money, so I don't even have enough to buy a whole pack. But you know what? Here. 53 pence. That should be enough to buy me one cigarette, shouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, give me the money back. Trust me, things that are free never taste as good as something you've paid far too much for. Really? I think they taste better. Well, go and rub an off license. Okay. Thanks for the cigarette. What's the matter what phone it is? <laughs> no, I just rang your phone just now and some guy said he'd stolen it. He answered my phone? Is it true? Oh, son of a bitch. Well, do you need me to come pick you up in a cab or something? No, no, I'm not far. Just wait for me, okay? I, I gotta go. Fucker. 
What have you done with my bag? Which one? Next to the river? Yeah, and thank you. And fuck you. Damn it. Yeah. What? Take it. Get yourself a taxi, buy a tea towel, whatever. Go on. Listen, I can't take your money. I'm just here for a couple days vacation with a friend, and I'm flying home tomorrow to New York. OK. Take it. This would be a loan, right? Go on. Can I get your address? Okay, Michael. I'm Edie. Um, listen, I, I, I gotta go. I'm meeting up with a friend who lives here, and um, I haven't seen her in a long time. She's with another friend. They don't really get on, so. Sure. Uh, can I, can I get my phone back? I'll send you the money, minus the 53 pence. City, please. I know. And you need to report the theft to the cops. You can't make an insurance claim without the relevant documentation. There's a station house a couple of blocks away. I wrote out the address for you. Thanks, Mom. You need money? Uh, no, I actually borrowed some off a guy I met at a bar. Oh, impressive. Listen, I uh, just found out I got to work tonight. Oh, no. No, we're dead for months until the week you come over. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, um, really sorry about you and Luke. Yeah, well, you know, you hate him. Yeah, well, ooh, table. Not exactly, but, you know, no one's good enough for you, Edie. Well, I mean, it's cool. We're still friends. So he still calls you when he needs something. She's still in love with him. I am not. Have you been dating? I've been too busy. She's still in love with him. I've been running the program for the past couple of months, as well as teaching nights, and people get sick, so, you know. They're paying you for running the place as well. Jesus, Edie, get a lawyer, get a life. She's still in love with him. I'm fine. He's celibate, broke, and exploited. What's fine about that? And what about you, Catherine? How's your perfect little life? I'm just looking out for you, Edith. You know that. But to answer your question, life is particularly perfect at the moment. James is great, and the house is nearly ready, and it will be exceptionally perfect. And you know, after so long living on different sides of the Atlantic, it's just so liberating to be together the whole time, you know? Just sharing stuff, and not living on a plane, and spending thousands of dollars on phone calls. Right. What's an off-license? Ooh. 
a liquor store. Why? Oh, no reason. I was just advised to rob one tonight is all. You know, as an attorney, I would like to point out the risks in such a venture. Look, I gotta go. Next time you come, the house will be ready. You guys can stay, okay? Perfect. Okay, what do you want to drink? I gotta go to the police station. What? Yeah, I gotta start my insurance claim. You're kidding me. With what I make a year? No. Come on, Edie. I paid my premium. It won't be long. Man, this town closes at like 10 o'clock. You coming? I'll stay here. I'll meet you back at the hotel room. So sorry. You know, even after all this time, I still can't believe the way they just throw people out onto the street like that. Oh, come on. This business attracts the very worst people with the very worst motives. And only the most feral and the most pitiless will emerge from the toxic sludge with enough money to look themselves in the mirror when they're 50. And that, Ranch, is the truth. I love it. Me too. Hey. I'm back on the market. Listen, I called this bloke I know at Brown Brothers. He wants you to give him a shout on Monday morning. Yeah? You want some kind of fee if that comes off? Look, about your book. I knew that deep down you'd want me to have your best accounts, instead of Harcourt's nephew, for example. Well, put like that, I guess it's all working out great for me. Exactly. So listen, can anyone lend me any money? I'm over my limit until tomorrow morning. Man, I don't believe you sometimes. You've just got redundancy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Go and get yourself some drinks. I'll be back in a minute. Sorry, man. What I got you for? Drunk and disorderly and insulting behaviour. Drunken and disorderly and criminal damage. What, your behaviour wasn't insulting? Apparently not. I met this girl tonight. An American. I lent her all my money. Where are we going on this? I don't know. Just been sitting there thinking about it. Something occurred to me that I'll probably never see her again. Well, if you lend her money, mate, I don't suppose you will. She was beautiful, man. Quite funny, too. Wow. Well, that certainly puts all my shit in perspective. Antonioni?
They don't let you smoke in there. I cracked and bought a whole pack with your money. Want one? You seemed kind of forlorn when I saw you going in earlier, and I thought maybe I'd stick around, buy you a drink. But first, we need to set down some ground rules. I'm here because all my other social options are dead, and I didn't want to spend my last night in London in a hotel room. You showed me some kindness earlier, and you seem like you might be okay company, but I should let you know that I'm not the type of girl who loses control and ends up doing stupid stuff with some guy she just met in the bar. So, if I understand your proposal, on a no-strings, no-sex basis, you're offering to buy me one drink with my own money. That's it. Speak about <laughs> Hello. How did I get here? I carried you up the stairs. What? Oh, the couch is really uncomfortable. Uh, I gotta get back to the hotel. My friend's gonna be worried and my flight's at 10. You got time. I'll call you a cab. Do you have any, like, real coffee? I told you, I'm half Italian. Yeah, well, maybe the British half buys the coffee. I've never seen anyone fall asleep like that. One minute you were up, and the next minute... Were you talking about your job? <laughs> For me, it's not a job. It's a voyage. You sell shares. No. I sell dreams. Can I have one of your cigarettes? No. Oh, you're right. I shouldn't. Can't really afford it anyway. Teaching doesn't pay, huh? Are you kidding? Adult literacy barely pays the rent. The days I work in a record store. Then why'd you do it? Well, I work in a record store because I love records, and I teach because the people I help are poor and hardworking, and all they want is to better themselves and make a life for their children that they never had. But I guess you don't understand that. You don't know very much about me. You're right. But I had a nice time. It's not polite to sound surprised. Well, I've never hung out with a banker before. Listen, um, you want to give me your address or something? But do you come to New York for work, or...? No. Email? I hate email. I think if you have something to say to somebody that, um, you should just say it. That'll be your cab. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. I'll send you the money. I know you will. Astrid? Astrid? I'm 
sorry, Ellie. Let's go. Where have you been? I met some guy. So you paid the bill yet? What guy? Are you okay? Sure. So you're gonna see the guy again? What guy? The guy you slept with last night. Are you kidding me? It was a vacation thing. If I wanted an Englishman, I could order one in at home. You sure you're okay? What's eating you? Nothing. You know I hate porn. Right. You lost an ear. Oh. Trip to the old country. I lost an earring. Did our apartment sitter give you any shit? Nah, but your cat was crying the other night, real loud. Oh, Jesus, Cookie! Ugh. Get some windows open. Oh, man. Oh. Cat? Cookie, you fucked up junkie. Ex junkie. Whatever. What? Come here. Listen, where are you? We're in D.C. We played a couple gigs and went real well, and then Kenny took us down the road to dumb fun again last night. But it was awesome. We're headed back now. Yeah. You OK? I told my brother to make sure he cleaned up the place. He did that, didn't he? Luke. Baby, listen. Cookie was... He was dead when we got back here. The cops, they said he went last night or early this morning. Luke. Luke. What happened? Baby, I'm so sorry. Yo, what's up, Luke? What's up, man? Oh, 
man, what a waste. It's cold, babe. Let's get home. Just give me a minute, okay? I better get back, um, see if the cops need anything. After you. But then I went to that club in Whitechapel and some people went on to a party in Hoxton somewhere. It was shit. Should have come. I told you. Yeah, three o'clock in the morning. I heard you. Thanks. You know, you're getting boring. Yeah. I'm going to New York. Do you want to come? What? Gab will be here any minute. Thanks. But you should see your horoscope, man. It's a really bad time to be impulsive. And you know, when someone doesn't leave you their address and phone number, it can often mean they don't want to see you again. I looked in her file effects while she was asleep. Sort of besides my point. Well, what is your point? Stay here, do nothing, die. It works for a lot of people. And you hate Americans. Everyone hates Americans. But she's from New York. They're almost like us. That's my cab. But what about Kristen? Isn't she coming over for the weekend? She didn't call. Uh, she never calls. She just turns up. I know. What sort of a relationship is that? <sighs> and why haven't all that stuff about chemicals? I was just saying that to make you feel better. Didn't work. Uncle Michael, hi, Raph. Be good, love. I thought you were having him this weekend. No. Listen, I've got to go to Bristol, and I can't take him with me. And I can't get anyone else to have him, and... I don't know where your brother is. I phoned him, but he doesn't pick up his messages. Let's face it, he's not the best father to start with. He has his football stuff with him, and I'll be back tomorrow night. Tara, you can't Thanks, just... Mike, I owe you. More flakes? Yeah. And a slice of toast. Angelo, listen, man. Your mum forgot to tell us you were coming this weekend. And the thing is, your uncle Mike's got to go to America now, but you're going to stay with me. And I'm going to take you to football and look after you. OK? And a Chinese? We had a Chinese last week. Are you sure? Absolutely. I now am your aunt. You all right with this? Yeah. I'll make it up to you, all right? It's OK. Oh, that's your cab. So long, sucker.
seems for both of us, yeah? It's me. I'm here. What do you want? Let it go today. An A143, man. And you got sent off for fighting. What time to go to bed? I let him stay up for the football. He needs his sleep, man. You want to play daddy, you stay here and do it. You seen her yet? I've just dropped off the earring and me address, and now I'm going to go out for a drink. You flew 3,000 miles to drop off an earring. That's right. Anyway, there was all this stuff going off in our building. Some fucking corpse coming out on a stretcher. Yeah, that was your dignity, man. Yep. What are you doing here? I mean, what gives you the right to just come into my life like this? I mean, what were you thinking? Are you crazy? Do you, how did you even get my address anyway? Jesus! You know what? I hate surprises. And the last thing I need is some crazy British stalker. I can't do this. I can't.
I had a nightmare. Hey. Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's time to have a baby. What? I'm pregnant. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh, cool. Who's a father? Michael, <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, why, well, he's not here. Oh. I was hoping to surprise him. Yeah, well, I won't worry. If I'm seeing him for weeks, you don't return his calls, I think he'll definitely be surprised. It won't be a surprise if you tell him. You don't want me to tell him? No, I want to tell him. Good, I don't want to tell him. You promise? I promise. Good. Well, I'm off to bed then. Sleep tight. Hit me. Tomorrow I might be dead. Through my sleepless days, I found that in my dreamless sleep I'm bound. To one night hear the sound of you calling. Do not stumble through tonight. Have no fear of falling. This isn't a great time for you. Do you want to go for a drink sometime? What, a date? Something to eat, a film, whatever. Next weekend. <laughs> Michael, I live here and you live there and our lives are in two different places. I mean, it's crazy. You know, I just broke up with somebody because they weren't going to be around in New York enough, you know? It doesn't make any sense. But do you? It's crazy. But tomorrow you might be dead. <laughs> Just don't stumble through tonight. Have no fear of falling. She's probably just saying how much you want to come. It's a test, that's all. He would come all the way to New York just to see me for a couple of hours. Did you have to tell me my news because I told him not to? You got fired. No, I'm going to have a baby. But hey, that's the past. I'm alive. And we and me should get back together. You're in love with the guy, so go with it. I don't want to get hurt like that again. I can't. Hey, you're right. It's done. Move on. Do you want a DNA test? Because that's fine. You said you were on the pill. Oh, so soon. You know, I'm having a crisis here. Yeah, when I have a crisis, I party. Next tonight, classic car comedy Genevieve stars Dinah Sheridan and Kenneth Moore.